Amino acid derivatives. I already told you what these were in the basic idea. Here's another example of um, their different types here. Oops, I just drew on there. So, and we will look at these three types in different detail. So they're all derived from amino acids. Thyroid hormones, one big category. Catecholamines, these are all shown down here. Um, they are derived, did I say tyrosine before? Oh yeah, there's tyrosine, yeah. Phenylalanine and tyrosine um, shown down there. So derived from amino acids. And then the other one is a tryptophan derivative. Tryptophan is the food, the amino acid found in Turkey that is blamed for your post-food coma at Thanksgiving. It's the precursor to melatonin and also serotonin. We won't talk a whole lot more about sero tonin, these two, um, but I do want you to be able to have them in your mind as in this category of amino acid derivatives. Otherwise, we will actually focus, we'll talk a little bit more about thyroid hormone when we talk about the thyroid. Catecholamines will come up quite a bit. You know epinephrine already. You know norepinephrine. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are neurotransmitters. Um, norepinephrine is a, is a very common neurotransmitter in the autonomic nervous system. Both epinephrine and norepinephrine can act as hormones when they're released from the adrenal medulla. So we'll see them again there. You may have also heard of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter. Wait, wait a minute, why am I neurotransmitter hormone what? Remember, it can be the same molecules. So norepinephrine is a hormone when it's in the bloodstream and it's a neurotransmitter when it's released into a synapse. Dopamine is primarily a neurotransmitter. Epinephrine is primarily a hormone. <clears throat> okay, these all bind to cellular membrane receptors, so receptors on the membrane, except for thyroid hormone. So these two are going to bind to membrane receptors. What does that mean for their function? They're probably going to activate G protein coupled receptors. And that's what you've actually seen some, you saw in the fall, norepinephrine binding to, sorry, both epinephrine and norepinephrine binding to alpha and beta receptors, remember those? Those were G protein coupled receptors. Thyroid hormones are going to be carried into the cell to bind to intracellular receptors. And that's because they have a carrier protein that allows, that helps them in. So we'll look at, so they're actually gonna alter gene expression as well. That'll be important for thyroid function. Do, do, do anything else here? Okay, here is a quick review with some nice images. This is a nice image showing the two different types of receptors, cell surface receptor, right? This is the same thing as a membrane receptor. And here it tells you what binds to those, what types of hormones. A nuclear receptor, wait a minute, what's that? That's an intracellular receptor. Why is it also called a nuclear receptor? Because it's gonna go into the nucleus ultimately. And that's steroid and thyroid hormones. Beautiful, great. Okay, do this learning check. Pause your video and fill this out. <laughs> 